In this video, we're going to take a look at the render settings, which you can find under the edit menu. And they're prominently displayed most of the way down. Uh, render settings. Now, these will pop up here inside the inspector. Now, generally speaking, what you have access to are some environmental uh, settings for how your level is going to look when played. Some of them are pretty obvious, like do you want to have fog, yes or no? And if I look out here into the distance of our level, oh, we're in the game mode, excuse me. So here, some place where I can see kind of far out, I can turn that off and on, and you can see the result. Right. Now you can change the color of this fog with the color picker, and you can change its density as well. Now we're using point double oh seven five, but if we start to crank this up, you can see we can get some really thick fog if it suits us. But you'll also notice this is a very uh, sensitive value. Right, even at something like, oh, let's say point 0.1. Oh, point 0.1 will be just completely washed out. Yeah. It's, it looks like a, a scene from Silent Hill or something. Right, but something you'll also notice if you pan up towards the sky, mm -hmm. you'll notice that the sky does not... Uh, show any effects of fog whatsoever. That's right, and you got to be kind of careful of that if you know you're in an area where the sky itself is exposed all the way back to the quote-unquote sky box. Uh, it can be a little bit on the confusing side. So if you know you needed fog that was this thick, you might want to use something other than the sky box, such as your own piece of geometry up there to define the sky. Well, you could also use a sky box still, but you have to make sure the sky box is colored in such a way that it does support something. Now that's like true. That. That's true. Make sure that your your skybox uh, matches the, the the kind of color of your fog. Right. What you're trying to do is get a very subtle effect so you get the feeling of distance, but you don't want it to be so heavy-handed that it then becomes unbelievable. That's right. Now what we've done is we've set it way down to point double oh seven five just for a little bit of atmospheric separation back there in the distance. And as we turn that on and off, you can really see how that's kind of lightening up our level and adding a, an overall sense of haze. Now down from here, you have the ambient light. Currently, we are uh, we're using light map shadows. So seeing the result of this will probably prove a little bit tricky. but Well, it'll I, bring up your trees and stuff. So. It will bring up the trees because they're vertex lit. The ambient light is kind of your secret fourth type of light. It's always present in your level. Uh, you can turn it down to black, which essentially turns it off. Uh, it's just kind of a, a general coloration, which is added to all surfaces evenly. So, I mean, we can ambient light everything toward red, and anything that is vertex lit, such as the trees, will start to get picked up a bit. Right. And this is, again, another setting that you want to be very, very careful with. It does add a little extra to your scene in the right amounts. But the more heavy-handed you get with it again, the more unbelievable things become because it lights everything evenly, and it can actually wash out your sight and, or your scene and make everything look very flat. Yeah, it'll, it'll really remove your sense of depth if used too much. And down from here, we have the skybox material. You can think of this kind of like your default skybox. If you don't have a skybox applied directly to a camera via a skybox component, this is the skybox you're going to see. And that's really all there is to it. Now, that's where we have assigned the skybox for our level, which is why you see the overcast sky back here in the background. Now, yeah. we can change that, right? We can change that. Why not? Uh, we can come under skyboxes and just drag in like another one. So grab like Starry Night and drop that in. And now it's nighttime. Of course, we'd really want to make some changes to our lighting to accommodate this kind of a skybox. And just as a general rule of thumb, uh, I highly recommend you get your skybox decided on before you worry too much about lighting. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to put our Overcast 2 skybox back in there and we'll move down. Now our next setting is Halo Strength, and this is not something you're going to be able to readily see unless you create a light. So just for the sake of demonstration, let me come into the hierarchy view, and I'll go under Create, and we'll create a point light, which I'm just going to move right up here to the center of the path. You can see it does kind of light things up when it gets close to the ground. Very cool. Uh, but if we take a look at the light settings, we can choose whether or not to draw the halo. And the halo is what's well, supposed to simulate a little sphere of light around the light source itself. Uh, what it really is is a two-dimensional texture, which is always pointing back at the camera. However, if I go back under Edit and take a look at the render settings once more, we can control our halo strength at the global level. So changing it here inside the render settings will actually change it for all lights that are using this halo. Down from here, we have flare strength. Now, let me go ahead and turn my halo off, because uh, using the two on top of each other can be a little bit on the confusing side. But 
Here inside my light, I have a flare setting as well, and this is a texture reference. So if I go under my light flares folder, and light flares are included with Unity as a separate package. If you don't see them in uh, Unity right now, it's only because you haven't loaded that package in. I could grab, say, the 50 millimeter zoom flare and drop that on. And now we have this painfully bright, terrifying <laughs> lens flare that is floating in our scene. But now we can go back over to our render settings and we can control that overall flare strength. So if that was just a little bit much, you know, we can dial it back. But again, because we're doing it at, in the render settings, this is a global setting. Right. This is being applied to all of our lights at the same time. So if we had multiple lights that were using lens flares, we're <laughs> I'm sorry, just the idea. Uh, <laughs> multiple lights were using lens flares would all be turned down equally uh, if we were using this setting. Right, now these are settings that are also available on a camera that the, if they're set on a camera, they override the default settings. That's right, and that's what you're going to find here inside this uh, the render settings. Really, these are fallbacks. Right. Anything you haven't defined elsewhere uh, is going to fall back to whatever these settings are. Now, down from here, we can control what our halo texture is. If I take just a moment and jump back to our light, uh, let's go ahead and just kill out our lens flare we can turn our halo back on. You can see that our halo is a really, really simple texture. It's just kind of a, a fade out toward nothing uh, sort of circular texture. So if I take the halo strength up, that becomes a lot more apparent. But you can change that. If you had another texture that you wanted to use as the halo, something you'd actually drawn in Photoshop, uh, you could drop it in right here. Uh, you can also bring in a spot cookie. Now, I'm not going to get too much into uh, what the spot cookie is. It's really just a texture that you can apply to a light. For instance, you have like a flashlight. I'm sure everybody here has used a flashlight at some point. When you aim a flashlight like at the wall of your bedroom, you don't get a perfect circle of light. There's always a little bit of darkening toward the center, maybe where the, the bulb of the light is reflecting off the inner cone of the flashlight. There's some sort of a pattern to it. I keep thinking the bat signal. Sure. The bat signal is a great example. You know, if you, if you had to call Batman, you're going to climb up on top of a building with a great big spotlight that has a bat in the middle of it, and you're going to shine that up at the clouds. And if you needed to re reproduce that, you'd use a light cookie. And that would be uh, a, a texture of a white circle with a little bat in the middle of it, and then you could just attach that to your spotlight, and you'd have the bat signal, which that's a great example. <laughs> But uh, since we don't always, I mean, really, it'd be great if all of my flashlights were the bat signal. That'd actually make me pretty happy. But uh, if for some reason uh, you had to do something a little bit more realistic, like headlights or a flashlight, you could create a texture that looked like a little bit of distortion to make your flashlight look a little more natural and assign that as a spot cookie. Right. Another trick that you could do, just thought of, is let's say you had uh, you were working on an interior scene. It was a house, and you wanted light streaming in through a window. And you want to simulate a stained glass window. Mm -hmm. This would be a trick that you could um, put a, a texture that had colors on it, and you could put that on a light that would simulate the effect of a stained glass window shining on inside of a room onto the floor. Absolutely, but like everything else here inside the render settings, you got to remember that what you're setting here are defaults, right? Fallbacks that every light would use. So if you set up something like the bat signal. Uh, here inside of your spot cookie, then all of your spotlights would have the bat signal well, attached. Maybe to we really, really need to get a hold of Batman. Yeah, and you know, I, I would think that would be kind of a an you know an emergency call when like every building has a, a bat signal hanging off the top of it. Anyway, that is a quick run through of the render settings, and again, that's available one more time underneath the edit menu down to render settings. That is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.